In the year 2000, the Dyson company launched their second original product, a revolutionary washing machine. It launched rave reviews and set the world of washing machines into a spin. It was set to dominate its market in the same way Dyson's vacuum cleaners had already done to theirs. However, after only four short years, production stopped and it was pulled from the shelves, never to be seen or heard from again. How did it all go wrong? After the acclaimed success of the DC01 to DC04 vacuum cleaners, James Dyson decided to introduce a completely new product to market. Dyson set his team of engineers and designers the task of finding out the most efficient way possible to clean clothes. And for the CR01 washing machine as it was to become, the designers and engineers explored every possible conceivable way to clean clothes. From using microwaves to try and blast the dirt out of clothes to simple old fashioned hand washing. And it was whilst carrying out this research that the Dyson R&D team discovered an astonishing fact. Hand washing clothes for 15 minutes removed more dirt than a 67 minute cycle in the best washing machines currently available. So although washing machines have removed the drudgery of washing clothes, they have vastly poorer performance than someone 300 years ago sat next to a river. Dyson and his team set out to replicate this motion of hand washing clothes, but within the confines of a machine. In order to do this, they settled on having two drums that would rotate in opposite directions to simulate the manipulation and flexing of hand washing. This forced clothes to rub against themselves, agitating the dirt and separating it from the clothing fibres, much in the same way the process of hand washing items of clothing makes them clean. This brainwave was an idea just as revolutionary and unique as Dyson's applauded vacuum cleaners. The Dyson CR01 Contra Rotator was first available in November 2000. It was launched to much pomp and publicity. The machines were released to flawless reviews. The Contra rotating drum method of cleaning clothes genuinely worked. Clothes were cleaner quicker using much less energy and water. A truly game changing appliance and in my opinion more so than their vacuum cleaners or indeed any of their products since. Surely every home would buy one leaving Dyson's competitors scratching their heads trying to come up with ways around the patents in order to manufacture their own two-drum system. But by the time the last one rolled off the production line, Dyson only accounted for 1% of the UK washing machine market. With such an innovative product, modern bold design and stellar company reputation, how did it all go so wrong? The official party line of Dyson for its failure was one of cost and profitability. James Dyson is quoted as saying, As a washing machine it was a great success. It was both innovative and effective. It failed because we charged too little and made it too complex. Upon its release in the year 2000, the CR01 cost a staggering £1,000, that's £1,721 or £2,371 in 2021 money. So you may question Dyson's statement regarding them charging too little for it. However, even when charging such a high price, Dyson were reportedly losing money or making next to no profit on each sale. And that's where the final piece of Dyson's statement comes into it. The CR01 Contra Rotator was eye-wateringly complicated. Getting two drums to spin in the same direction and then halfway through a cycle begin to contra rotate, all while sitting underwater, was in fact a feat of engineering. In order for the Dyson engineers to make this happen, compared to a traditional machine, it had two of everything. Two motors, two drums, two clutches, two drive belts. You were effectively buying two washing machines stuck together in one big package. So it's easy to see why it costs so much to manufacture and then sell at a competitive price and make a profit. But all this being said, their vacuum cleaners are big, complicated and expensive, yet they sell in their millions and have transcended being a simple boring household appliance and become a fashion accessory you would leave on display for people to see. The history of the vacuum cleaner's vortex suction method is also just as complicated as getting two drums to spin in opposite directions. And yet these vacuum cleaners continue to be a triumphant success almost 30 years after the first model was launched. Dyson customers also don't bat an eye at them being double the price of a competitor's vacuum cleaner. People buy Dyson products because they are the best at what they do. So is this truly the reason production stopped? Or was there another reason production stopped? 
one perhaps that Dyson don't want to admit to in fear it would tarnish the reputation of the company. Well, although the official party line was one of finances, with all of the added complexity in the machines compared to a standard one, the Contra Rotator suffered from catastrophic reliability problems. James Dyson's first vacuum cleaner went through 5,126 prototypes over a 15 year period before it was in production. The washing machine on the other hand, it would appear did not. Two out of every three machines sold needed a repair, a 66% failure rate across all machines sold. In the end, customers knew their Dyson engineer by name they were round fixing the machine so often. When Dyson's competitors Bosch Siemens brought a machine into their lab to test and take apart, they reported that it failed under normal use in just two weeks and noted that it appeared to have been designed from the ground up without looking at how traditional machines worked. Dyson simply hadn't spent enough time developing the machine before releasing it to market. It was still only a concept of a product. Shops were forced to replace and refund large numbers of machines, and Dyson were hemorrhaging money in warranty repairs for the machines they had sold. In the end, in one final attempt to try and plug the hole in the sinking ship, Dyson engineers were instructed to update the firmware in the machines to completely stop the machine from performing their contra-rotating action, effectively neutering the machines and turning all Dyson washing machines into the single drum machine they were designed to replace. This failure has left an indelible mark on James Dyson. In recent years, he has remarked on the experience as a wonderful educative failure. Dyson engineers are constantly testing different ways of working, just as we did with the CR01, and we fail every day. Failure is the best medicine, as long as you learn something. I feel the legacy of the washing machine failure has stuck with Dyson and made Dyson one of the most cautious companies out there. This is evident with the recent news of Dyson pulling the plug on their N526 electric car project, despite having a production ready model that they spent £500 million developing. Exactly as with the washing machine, James Dyson again cites the same financial concerns of them not being able to make a profit on units sold and it being commercially viable. I can't help but think that the Dyson company still live in the shadow of the washing machine failure. The CR01 was a fantastic concept, and when it felt like it, it genuinely worked amazingly well. It makes me wonder, in today's current climate of energy efficiency and minimising our usage of natural resources, will Dyson revisit the concept? With the advances in technology over the past decades and the resources and expertise the modern Dyson company possess, along with their fanatical customer base, I can't see it being anything other than a great success. Thanks for watching.